1975, an epic limerick. We start with Harry Smith in 1950, a beatnik weirdo living in New York City. His huge collections were insane, of Easter eggs and paper airplanes, and rare records he had about a million and sixty. To change America through music was his hope, and to make some money because he was broke, he compiled a triple-decker collection of songs from his records, released as the Smithsonian Anthology of American Folk. On a Monday morning, just about nine o'clock, the great ship Titanic began to reel and run. Husbands and wives, little children lost their lives. Wasn't it sad when that great ship went down? Smith's plan began to work as foretold. This weird music began to take hold. It sparked an interest in these forms of life underground from the norms, and soon millions of folk records were being sold. By the early 60s, Dylan, Joan Baez, Phil Oakes, we're all inspired by those old folks. Then one strange folk band downtown, called the Holy Modal Rounders, began to make it more anarchistic with weird voices and drug jokes. Mom's out there, switching in the kitchen, and dad's in the living room, grousing and a bitching. I'm out here, kicking the gong for you, euphoria, euphoria. When your mind starts feeling and walking, your inside voice starts feeling and squawking. Floating around on the bell, on the clouds, in euphoria. That was 1964. Then in 1965, Lou Reed and John Cale in the Ludlow Street Dive had a similar musical spin, also on acoustic guitar with violin, with even more New York Street drug jive. Hey, white boy, what you doing uptown? Hey, white boy, you chasing our way around? Hey, white boy, you chasing our also in 1965, the Rounders met some other beatnik intellectual thugs on East 10th Street who called themselves the Fugs. The Fugs were recorded by the same Harry Smith, playing the punkiest songs yet to exist. Lo-fi noisy shit about poetry, sex, and drugs. I don't have a bad time, I don't need to come, for I have become an amphetamine bum. If you don't like sleeping and don't want to screw, then you should take lots of amphetamine too. <laughs> In 1966, the Fugs signed to New York label ESP. The same label put out a band called The Gods, spelled with a Z. The Gods accomplished the feat of making even the Fugs music sound sweet, with the least musical folk punk racket in history. Meow. West Coast hippie scene, New York underground music was far from mainstream. It was intellectual, but noisy and hectic. And then the Velvet Underground went electric and made folk punk more beautiful and more extreme. Stop New York's strange folk punk tide. In 1968 came David Peel and the Lower East Side. They recorded an album in the street, screaming and sloppy. They were signed to Electra Records and sold almost a million copies, with songs like I Like Marijuana and Up Against the Wall Motherfucker inside. A mother, where is my father? Where is my brother? And the Stooges were a freak out band in Detroit, but folks ignored them until Danny Fields brought them to New York and had John Cale from the Velvets record them. While most acid rock was turning into progressive, the Stooges pushed the raw and aggressive, and Iggy Pop sang about degradation and boredom. <laughs> And when 
Danny Kaye was a guitarist who began playing music with an East Side poet named Patti Smith who would use it to mix her wild poetry with simple rock stuff, like the Fugs in a way but less rough, a postmodern way to take high art and low art and fuse it. Dolls start mixing trash and drag fashion with the rock and roll heart. The Johnny Funders David Johansson sound mixed the old style simple rock with the new New York underground and sort of defined the moment when stupid on purpose became the new smart. <laughs> And the Lower East Side of New York began punk fashion as well, with spiked hair and ripped clothes worn by a poet named Richard Hell. Hell was in television, the Neon Boys, the Heartbreakers, the Voidoids, and he wrote the song that gave the new 70s punk generation its first anthem yell. Smith and Ramones. 76 punk fans, he began, and the whole thing moved to England. England stole all the credit, and that's how it goes. 